All right, here we are with the 2022 Bouldering National Champion, Babet Roy, joining uh, uh, just to talk about the competition that happened last week. Uh, of course, she was competing not just in the Boulder event, but also the lead event. We'll talk about both because they both ended in kind of different ways. Um, Babette, thanks so much for, for uh, chatting for a little bit. I want to ask, first of all, about bouldering because that's where the competition started. Uh, you were d doing really well through the entire competition, but it took that very last boulder uh to lock in a win and i'll be honest after that i think it was problem number three you looked extremely frustrated coming off of the wall how was your headspace through all the different like phases of the competition this in general or in finals mostly well through all of it i guess because it was a like qualifiers was a really easy round it looked like and maybe you were oh, maybe you were, exactly yeah i was gonna say like yeah. the tops you got were easy but you missed some that others others achieved so how did you feel through the whole thing but for qualifiers i was a bit disappointed but it, it seems like i have a pattern to like climb badly when the boulders are easier i find i might like underestimate the boulders i think so that was a shitty round i was extremely mad because yeah uh, semis were great honestly i love uh, semis is always my favorite ground because like the boulders are always really tricky to figure out they demand a lot of physical strength and like really you have to be really concentrated for it so i think um the boulders were sick too so that was fun and for finals like i don't know i i, I wanted to win but at the same time like i was ready for any like yeah, result so yeah i don't know but i feel like i really got a good control over my emotions during that round which really helped so i could top the final boulder and then have the win so do you like do you think of yourself as kind of an emotional climber because sometimes oh. you, you show it right yeah i think i'm a really emotional person in general so it's hard for me to just like hide what i'm feeling on the wall which i think makes me a lovable person too because people i guess can relate to me like when i'm frustrated and like i can get really intense but i feel like i've i've it's better now because it didn't help me in the past, but like right now I'm I'm learning to like manage my emotions with which helps. But yeah, I'm a really emotional climber. How do you how do you do that? Because you mentioned like uh, showing emotion, it makes it very easy for people to connect with you. But as an athlete, it can also send you kind of in the wrong direction sometimes if you let it get to yourself. So where where is the balance for you of being true to yourself, but also not letting it ruin your next climb? I don't know. I think it's it comes down to being rational. If I'm able to like rationalize what's happening, it helps me just get back on track. But I find it still hard. Like I, I love to be mad and to myself <laughs> go in that. So yeah, um, I don't know. I'm still working on that. How, uh, how did you think about the difficulty of the boulders in finals? Because it was, it was also a very hard round. And like, in my opinion, I felt a couple of the problems were hard, but like not in a good way. Um, did you, did you enjoy all four of them, even though they were difficult or, or were some of them like, you'd rather never have to climb those again? Um, I think I like the boulders in general, just cause yeah, exactly. They were hard. I think that was a, a good step up from other comps, but I think maybe the third boulder could have been, um, a better dino. I don't know. Cause it was weird. Yeah, it was weird. And I think I'm still mad about it cause it, it was still my style, so I don't know that that one got me really mad. But I think they could have figured out a way to maybe put a, a nicer dino on the wall. I don't know, not going downward. Yeah. But that was, yeah. Fair enough. So, but the other boulders were fine. I think I just misread the second one, which could have been done. I think statically, if you, if I did the press method. But the, other than that, I think the difficulty was fine. I think it's better. But in my opinion, I prefer a round where nobody tops all four than if it comes down to like how, like flash attempts. Right. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, what about the lead competition? Like you you were in first place after qualifiers, first place after semifinals, and then finals, you're the last one out. So you didn't have a chance to really see what happened before. But um, you, you got called out to climb very, very soon after Emmy did. Um, did you... Oh, did you have a sense in your head of like, oh, there there are some moves on this climb that are dangerous? Or what did you think? No, uh, I know. And I think my boyfriend told me in the live stream, they said I might have been uh, bothered by the fact that Emmy fell 
low. I didn't watch, so I don't know. But yeah, no, uh, I wasn't really uh, nervous about that. Honestly, I was just a bit surprised, but it didn't affect me in any way, I think. Um, yeah, so I no. I, honestly, like if, when people follow like whoever it is, I'm just like, okay, but I'm gonna go higher than them. It just mm -hmm. so it didn't really bother me in any way where I felt like the moves were gonna be harder. Yeah. Right, but then you come out to the climb, and of course there is this trap move almost at the third draw. Um, now, like, have you watched the stream, and have you watched all the other climbers do that move at all? Like, what do you what do you think about it after uh, after a week? Um, I haven't watched the stream because uh, I I haven't gotten my, the chance to really get around my emotions about it. But sure. uh, I don't know. I. I I have a lot of opinions, but I think <laughs> why? Uh, I think I just I might have climbed too confidently in a way, so I wasn't really careful about what I would I did. Honestly, I didn't really. I I still don't understand what happened. Like my foot just popped, and it didn't feel like it would. So I don't know. Um, I think the gym didn't allow maybe routes that would just really show uh, lead competences. I was a bit sad that our finals route was on a, a vertical, honestly, but uh, what? I, it's life. I, I would have liked to win, obviously, but uh, yeah, it happened. Um, you've been like through, through your youth career, you were obviously like, you were one of the, like the strong climbers, right? You were a notable athlete as a kid and the Pan American Championships was a really good example of that where you're like first in bouldering and fourth in lead and sixth in speed even. And so you're a well-rounded athlete that like people knew your name and all that kind of stuff. And I mm -hmm. remember 2017 or 2018 being, I guess your first year of competing uh, in the open category. And I think you won the, uh, the like, what did they call them back then? It was like the national open series it was like the quebec bouldering event uh that that helped you get to um uh nationals yes but anyway that was that was a really good season for you and you had lots of like everybody's eyes were on you to see if you were going to be the uh uh the next big thing um what was your transition like from being a youth athlete to being now just like an open competitor was it a smooth transition from from that age to to where you are now um no no i think i i burned out pretty quick when i started competing in the open when i was younger so like i kind of like shifted my focus on other things and climbing like i had a different path um so and then i came back because i knew i didn't i wasn't interested in like i don't know partying and that stuff where i i kind of dropped climbing before and then i don't know i i felt that i really was motivated so it, it was easier for me to get back into but the, I don't think it was smooth. I think I had a lot on my mind. So like, yeah, the transition was a bit weird for me, but I think it, it went well in the end. Does that leave you like, do you have any like advice for for for, uh, for like kids coming up then? Like, cause one, one thing I'll say is that when you're, when you're going through that age where like high school is finishing and maybe you're going yep. to university, like it's just, it's normal as a person to have all these changes in your life. Maybe you're living alone. Maybe you're like, like cooking for yourself for the first time. So your how you spend your time and how you're motivated and what you're eating, like it changes everything, your health, your mindset, what you're interested mm -hmm. in is so different. So, so you, you've come back to climbing. Not everybody does. Like some people just don't come back to competing uh, after yep. that transition. So can you talk a little bit more about like your experience and, and what you might say for others? Uh, I don't know. I think I burned out because of uh, an ED I had, which really like, but like, made me so tired and like tired of seeing everyone have like being so skinny on the scene. It just was bad for my mental health. And then like, yeah, always wanting to win because I, I love to put pressure on myself like a lot. There's, so I think just stopping to just focus on winning or like what the the end goal is and just going through the by being sure that you like what you do too because like I asked myself if I wanted to stop for real because at some point like you're tired you're wondering if you're missing out on other things and I think like it's important to really ask yourself the question but then in the end if you're if you're really ready to put the work in I think it's it gets easier if you let yourself um, 
think those things and ask yourself the questions, I think it's good to listen to yourself for that. Tell I don't me, know if it's clear. No, absolutely. Like that's that's kind of the thing about it is it's so hard to know sometimes what you want, right? Like mm -hmm. that, it's hard to answer that question sometimes. Um, can you tell me a bit about uh, like who your like coaching team or your support team is right now? So so you're out of Montreal, but you're at an age where people are like kind of starting to work by themselves. Maybe they don't have as much coaching as they used to, or some other people like have a nutritionist and a coach and then their mm -hmm. parents are really important to them. So, so how does that work for you? Are you like pretty self-directed or do you have, uh, have some people helping you out? Right now it's a bit hard because it's a, a weird zone. Like I still have uh, Philippe Bourdon, mm -hmm. but like he works another job now. So he's not as, uh, implicated as he was I have a physical preparator too but like I don't have like coaching uh, if someone with me I guess but I I like to have structure so I think I, I I would want in the near future to have really someone with me that would, I don't know help me with my climbing and stuff like that maybe someone for my mental too so <laughs> would yeah. you uh would you ever consider like having uh like um uh like an online coach kind of thing like i was talking to sophie uh butendike yesterday and she's got a bit of a history of of always using uh, uh coaches online because she lived in places where there wasn't there weren't as many coaches available like do you think that would work for you no no <laughs> I went there. I hate calling. I hate texting. I just, I don't, I, it wouldn't work for me. I think it would be too much effort in a way for me because I don't know. I really hate it. I think I like to have someone with me, like even if it's just once a month, once every two weeks to like look at me climb and tell me like what they see. And I don't know. I've been used to it with Marco, I think, Marc-Antoine Vigneault. Uh, when I was younger, he was there at, like, at every training I had. And my previous coaches, too, were always there. So I think I kind of got used to it. Now I'm more, uh, I don't know, autonomous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so, so, uh, yeah. Yeah, so, but I, I still would like someone that's more present, I think. Is, is it mostly about, like, watching your climbing and technique? Or, or do you need some, like... Uh, for, for me, I have a lot of trouble being confident that my training plan is working and I need somebody to tell me like, yes, this is a good plan mm -hmm. for you. Uh, yeah, I, I, I never want to do a program for myself. I think I would doubt myself too much, but that and I, I think I would like someone that actually sets things for me because I feel like in Canada, we love to set commercial things uh in montreal too they love it and I, i'm really growing tired tired of it after being to europe this summer i think i've saw i've seen so many good things in the the, uh, the gyms there that like right now in canada i feel like we don't put the effort that needs to be put in if we want good climbers so yeah someone that sets thing hard things for me well, that i would do there's another question is is like do you Montreal is maybe like the best city in North America for like like good climbing gyms like it's it's got a, so many gyms and a lot of them are new and big and and they spend money and and that's excellent um yeah. but is it enough for you like I there's other athletes talking about moving out of Canada and and going places where you know not just the route setting but also climbing with other climbers that like push you and and motivate you to a new level is that something you're considering at this point now that you've kind of gotten a really good tour of, of europe uh over the world cup season yeah i have family in germany so I, I might think about like staying there for a few months i'm i'm not sure yet i'm not that big of a fan of moving around honestly <laughs> i like to be comfortable but yeah looking where it's going like i i'm sorry like we have great gyms we have great holds but like the setting is just not it and i know i could i don't know it just and it's okay if their energy is not going there, like it's for them, but it, it's it's sad at the moment, I find. Even um, like anywhere in Canada, honestly. Like, it just like in terms of difficulty, you just can't find stuff that pushes you? It not pushes me, but like that's interesting and you see like how it can help you on like the World Cup circuits, like they just doing drills on like a slab or things like that, like hard boulders on a slab. We don't have like, we don't have we only have like big burly physical boulders, no like tricky jumps where you, I don't know. 
just do you feel like the setting in competitions like for example this this most recent nationals do you feel like that's doing a better job of of replicating those those events or do you still think it's like too easy and it's it's kind of just like it's hard for canada but it's not actually like like <laughs> world cup hard um i think that event was better honestly but i don't think we're quite there like if we look at other events like north american cups that happen in canada or like even last year's nationals i think i don't think they prepare us at all to do like stuff on the world cup circuit hmm. i think that's bad like if you put v5s you know, on the on a national event like i don't think it, it makes sense but like even not even it's not complicated enough i think they're too straightforward too like based on like physical strength or like too but that event was better i, I was happy with that but cool. we could go further yeah yeah do you are the high performance camps and comps like better for that like does that stuff encourage you when you get together with all the all the strong guys or, or is it still like not quite where you want it better okay <laughs> i don't i'm not gonna yeah sure every yeah it's all it's all good we don't have to go too deep um okay well let me ask you about the the world cups quickly about the season that you just experienced and maybe future seasons um you you had done some some international competitions before, but then this year you did a lot of them. Um, what were your expectations when you started the season, and and did it kind of go the way you expected? Uh, I don't know. I didn't really have any ex expectations. For sure, I wanted to do semi, as anybody. <laughs> yeah, but um, no, it went um, worse than I thought. Honestly, but I think there's a lot of things I didn't consider going into that and like being my first year it was I thought but for sure it is it's exhausting to travel that much and like people are so nice but when you don't choose the people you're gonna travel with, it's also a factor that's gonna like play into your energy levels. I find I'm an introverted person, so it, it was hard to yeah. So yeah, so many things but yeah, it could have went better, but I think it was a good year to just, like, have a feel of it. And then, like, for uh, future experiences, I think I'll be better prepared for all the, ac yeah, external factors that can affect it. What, uh, what's keeping you motivated? This is where I'll kind of end it, is, like, you're working very hard, you're climbing well, um, you've, you've won this Nationals, like, is there anything else that you, you want to achieve? Like, do you, is semifinals at a world cup the thing you're really chasing or is is the olympics the thing you're chasing like i know you can have you know reasonable goals and then like really big goals and maybe some goals you don't tell other people about you just keep them for yourself um but uh what's what what drives you to keep training every day right now I don't know, man. okay I, don't know. <laughs> I just love training i love winning <laughs> <laughs> um, I like to hurt myself a bit, so I love to like the, have the intense uh, level training. Sorry, I don't know how to speak English today, but um, I don't know. I it's hard for me to say my goals out loud because I'm I'm scared that if I say them and I don't achieve them, then it's yeah. But for sure, semis would be a good goal. A uh, consistent semi uh, mm -hmm. semi final climber. Uh, for sure, a final would be crazy, but. Uh, <laughs> Maybe, maybe. Yeah. Um, maybe like consistent top ten actually. Yeah. Yeah, on the World Cup level. For the Olympics, I I don't know. I would like to try, but like I I don't want to go there like qualifying for whatever reason and not feeling like I I can compare it to the other time. It's still a question. Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> but I I want to continue competing because I like it. I don't know. There's no. I think I'm just someone that likes to compete. That's those are the good ones. That means you're having but, fun no matter but, what. So that's a good sign. That's awesome. Yeah, listen, I'll leave it there. I really appreciate you uh, uh, taking a little bit of time to to chat and congratulations on on your first like open nationals win. That's a really big deal. I'm sorry it wasn't two, but there's always there's always <laughs> next year. You were so close. Um, so thanks very much, Babette, and to everybody watching. Thanks for watching this interview. If you liked it, you can always like and subscribe uh, for more content like this. And we'll see you in the next one.